It's Thursday and it's five o'clock. You're watching Chelsea and Tony live. And today our theme is animal photos. We've looked at them already, and you guys are going to hit this one out of the park. If yeah, you some of these are fantastic. They're amazing. If you haven't submitted submitted your photo yet, go to sdp.io slash submit, and we'll do a re-import a little later in the show. Um, I have some fascinating photo news that we're going to cover. Sorry, I'm getting some feedback. Is your, I think <laughs> we're getting a, a loop, I think, from uh, Chris. Uh but first, we should take a minute and thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. We have Squarespace. You have Squarespace. We all have Squarespace. That's not true, but you could if you want your own award-winning designer template, 24-7 customer support, and a website that's so easy to make. If you can drag and drop, you can make it your dang self. You should go to squarespace.com slash Tony and use the coupon code Tony to get 10% off. Thanks, Squarespace. Wow, you gave me credit this time instead of you. I know. I'm surprised. Well, by you're that. not even like it's not fun to be competitive if the other person isn't like putting up a fight. This is important. From now on, the show is going to be at 4 p.m. one hour earlier, whatever it is for you. This might help with some of the streaming issues we've been having. It's also going to help with some of the tired issues we've been having. It's going to be a win-win for some of us. And the theme for next week is portraits. You can visit it at sdp.io slash live 77. That'll just take you there. And then click set reminder. I made that person. And the photo. The person and the photo. I made both. Do you want to cover news or look at pictures first? Let's cover a little bit of news to give some people some time to import to their, their photos, okay. to think about the new four o'clock time, to sign up for Squarespace. Like all those things are things you could do right now. Photographer was named the 25 worst job in America. And we were not shocked because coincidentally, like a week before, we'd been pouring through the same uh, Bureau of Labor and something data and realized, oh, photography is actually looking pretty bad. They expect it to shrink by 5.6% over the next seven years. And the median annual wages is $34,000 a year which isn't bad, but it's substantially below the what the average person makes in America. And it's too bad. Like being a photographer means you make less than the average person. And it's a shrinking field. So that could actually get worse. Ugh. Um, um, I, sorry, I'm taking a picture of our dog off camera because she's sitting in a chair like a person and watching us do the show. And I'm going to post it on my Instagram so okay. that you guys can see it. Um, yeah. This is kind of difficult news, but I was wondering about their where they got this information from, because I think that photography, what it means to be a photographer is so drastically shifting that it makes me wonder where they get their data. So I know that Target, Walmart, uh, and a bunch of other big stores shut down their whole photo department. So all of those jobs are gone. But I also know that people that identify as like influencers, um, they're actually like mostly just photographers. So I'm wondering if the title has kind of changed a little bit since photography is now just such an integral part of what people do for work. Yeah, I think it's entirely likely. And uh, we also heard success story after success story of people whose businesses had grown. And it's definitely true that when you look at something on a big scale like this, it doesn't reflect how any one individual's success will be, even people new to the field We're talking about a big trend, a macro trend but we all individually, our lives are very micro. Yeah. Maybe I'm in denial because I care about this, but I just feel like photography is so important now for so many businesses since everyone's on social media. So Yeah, it's the, the worst people at the career who suffer in these situations usually. Let's talk about the winner of the 2019 World Press Photo Awards. It was John Moore for this pretty amazing image that does a great job of capturing the sort of immigration struggle that we're having in the United That's States so and specifically the the controversy around separating children from parents. Sorry, that's my dog and she's decided just to go crazy scratching the carpet. What a pain. Um, yeah. And I think the image itself is is powerful and interesting, but Petapixel compiled the actual cameras that was used and I thought that data was really interesting to our kind of gearhead audience. And here's what it looks like. First of all, it's almost all Canon and Nikon. We see 46.4% Canon, 36.8% Nikon, and then everybody else is left to just kind of 
pick up the remaining pieces. Hey, f- um, Fuji's got a pretty big slice going on in there. Yeah, a variety of different Fuji models picked up 10%. And then after that, it's like a few people using Sony and Leica. I think it was like one winner each. Almost everybody is still using SLRs. So here, you know, we're reviewing gear and it seems like everybody's talking about mirrorless cameras. But in reality, those are the new cameras that are selling. And yeah. most pro photographers are using something that's probably a few years old that they're familiar with because they might not have any reason to upgrade. I mean, this reminds me of my video series on my switch from the Nikon D850 to the A7R3 and why I'm still unsure because there's still a lot of great things about SLRs. Yeah, and the D850 in particular is a great camera. But it does not appear... Well, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Three people had winning photos taken with the Nikon D850, four with the Nikon D5, and then... Like almost all the other winners were Canon. This has just reflected the average sales over such a long period of time. And once you get down here, there is one Sony a7R2, not even the current generation, a Leica Q, which is kind of a, a I, fixed lens camera. I and have a question. Does anyone happen to know if the media has arrangements with camera companies? Like does Canon have some thing with like the New York Times where they update their journalists with new gear? They they definitely build relationships with uh, outlets like that. They they cut them deals. They make sure that they have the latest gear and service and stuff. But then that skews the data because it's not professionals just choosing. It's whatever they're being provided with. Yeah, these people are almost all the press. And you're right. They don't necessarily get to pick their gear. That's true. Numbers Here's can the lie, data. Tony. That's what my little secret is today. <laughs> well, I don't think it's lying, but I do think it's a reflection of the what the most serious people in the press are currently using. But you're right, that's not an average. And nor are they picking cameras based on camera reviews and stuff. I thought it would be interesting to look back at their 2012 data. And in 2012, we saw an even more extreme cut here. It was almost all Canon and Nikon then also <laughs> like almost all. So the fact that there are more Sony's and Fuji's here actually indicates that those are gaining some market share because in 2012 it was very very universal. Fuji wasn't even in there. Uh and almost everybody is a full frame camera. Um Wow, that was exciting. <laughs> let's take a look at some animal pictures. This is wow. Right? You get a pick right the away, John. The mountains in the background. What an amazing shot. The, you know, the pose of the animal, the foreground is beautiful, um, but the colors are bananas. Yeah, it does have that green. I'd like to point out, this is an ex- excellent example of subject separation. We have this very oh. contrasty goat in the foreground, and the background, because of the haze, is very <laughs> low contrast. What's happening? It's strange how blue... How much separation there is between the two colors. What has happened? The colors are really strange. It's like film or something. I'm trying to find a white spot, like a neutral. That ain't right. Yeah, the auto white balance isn't working for you. No. Okay. So maybe I know where you're coming from, John. (laughs) I actually, I mean, you're right. It's the foreground that has some weird color cast, and it's because the goat is covered in moss. (laughs) It's a moss goat. I'm kind of an amateur biologist, so. I can't even, I can't even understand. I'm struggling, and I'm sorry that you all have to watch this. I'd sit here for hours and figure this out, but that wouldn't be a good show. So I'm going to move on. I think you're going to have to separate it. Mm-hmm. Um, is this animal undiscovered? Do we Can we identify this? It's a friendly little We need horse. an expert. Yeah. Lens was a lovely old porst. That's really sweet. Again, the color cast. Ooh, this one looks a little more stylistic, but like put some toner on it, girl. <laughs> awesome shot. I really like it. It's it's striking. I think it's a great shot for kind of Instagram because it's a simple composition that would work really well in a small format. Okay. Love it. How is this oh. real? Oh my gosh, what are you? That is he the looks cutest just little like seahorse. Coral. He is like blurring the lines between plant and animal life here. Great shot, John. I like the reflection here. I'm. Is this a wild flamingo? Is that why his coloration is is lacking? Yeah, it could be. Let's just 
I think it's nice and simple. Would you crop it or am I? Yeah, I'd, I think I'd want it a little tighter, but yeah, it, bam, it's bam, so bam. close to oh, being symmetrical has... that I think I'd want it to be fully symmetrical. He also has the reflection. What if we did like a, a square? An eight by 10. Okay. Bingo, bingo. Instagram format. Go like this, go like that. You impressed with me? Yeah, that's impressive. I'm impressed with you, Diego. That's a nice shot. Oh my gosh. Is this little guy smizing? Has he been talking to Peter Hurley? <laughs> Someone... uh, I desperately want to get that sort of wood on the right out of it just because Whoa, it what? makes it look like a, a shot taken in a zoo or something. Tony? Maybe vertical is I, the right I like for what it, but... you did, but I think I like how it was before. You like this piece of wood in there? Yeah, because I feel like he's peeking out from behind a corner. Mm. Just okay. think about it. Establish that you two can actually be wrong sometimes. He's cute though, huh? Yeah, he's very cute. Is it my eyes or does everything have a green color cast today? This looks green, right? Yeah. Okay, let me let me put a little magenta in him, M Tulo. Because he's a warm guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. It's a red fox. It it's a red a fox. Red. What a beautiful picture. I'm going to give you a pic. Make me smile. Oh, How bats are so cute. How did you even find this, Peter? Yeah, I've never seen oh, a bat just hanging out. Because it's a diurnal bat. Oh. Cool. Very cool. I would love to see that up close. That is really neat. Um, would you... I'm going to do what Tony would do. I just, I feel like a little confused because usually the to the Tony is the cropper. I'm taking over. Putting me out of a job. Oh, boy. Oh, is that a fly catcher? Yeah, I think he's that's living a fly up to catcher his name. and literally catching a fly. Okay. It's a beautiful shot. Um, they're. There is some room for improvement here. You've got great gear, but I don't know of any reason for you to be at ISO 8,000 or ISO 2200 and one eight thousandths of a second. I I know exactly why he's at that because he was probably trying to get them flying at <laughs> some point. Yeah. And then one perches and you say, oh, it's still, and you take a picture and then your settings are crazy. Um, I like to put it in shutter priority when I'm doing wildlife for this reason so that I can just quickly go from a shutter speed where I would get a, the flying bird and then a shutter speed where I would get them perched. And then I put it in auto ISO because that will just automatically change the ISO to whatever the lowest possible ISO you can get. Good suggestions. Thank you. This show should come with a warning that sometimes animals eat other animals. Cause I know sometimes people are squeamish about that, but I'm sure we're going to see more of this, but this uh, great blue heron caught a fish and I think the shot turned out awesome. I wish the bird were facing us a little bit. I mean, the way you solve that, you're not going to pose the bird. So you just kind of hang out for longer and keep shooting. And at some point, they're going to decide to change direction. You know what I've learned from wildlife is that I overvalue reflections. And I can yeah. see in your crop that you did the same thing. And I always try to get that reflection in. I think in the moment, a reflection feels really beautiful. And it's easily lost in translation in a photo unless it's like crystal clear reflection and really striking and really the subject of the photo. And I think this time your composition took a hit because you were trying to squeeze that reflection in. So instead, let's forget about it. Let's move on from it. Yeah, I've I've done this sort of A-B test where I've shared a photo composed around the reflection and then shared the exact same photo, but just cropped in tighter so that you could see more detail and you weren't losing that sort of real estate to the reflection and people like consistently prefer without the reflection. Hmm. I know you gotta let go of the artsy side. Nobody cares about the reflection. I know, but in person, the reflection is stunning. It's just very hard to capture it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a pic, Charles. This is awesome. I love that you included the grasses here to give us some sense of scale. I might even want to see a little bit more of the grasses, maybe see the ground. Cause like the story here, the compelling part is just how high this animal is. I also would like to make the colors a little more vivid because that's like part of it. This just seems larger than life and I love that. Mm -hmm. Skin glow. No. 
So we'll brighten that up. And now that just gives it that pop. Pop, pop. Mm. It's nicely done. Pop, pop. We make a good team. Speaking of animals eating each other. Do you think that's like a gummy worm for them? They look pretty psyched. <laughs> this shot's pretty awesome. <laughs> I, oh man. Ants are yeah. really neat how they work together. I think we could all learn a lesson. Um, what? Did he focus on this little tube instead of the ants? I mean, no, would... it's it's pretty good. My suggestions were just going to be to use an a, like a, a flash attachment because the flash right now is so direct. If you sort of put your flash on a little arm and hover it over the subject, I have a video about this in stunning digital photography, the macro chapter. That will allow you to shoot at a lower ISO and with a higher f-stop too, and that would get more of these ants in focus and just make the light prettier and more natural because it does feel like an on-camera flash right now. Sorry. <laughs> hmm. Someone's living his best life. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty cute. It's nice. Uh, definitely try to align the focal plane with the animal. Oh. God, oh. goodness. Alligator snack. A nickname nobody wants. I have never actually seen an alligator catch an animal oh, in a while. I thought like they that only before. slept. It's hard times. Wow. Look at how clean his teeth are. Any dental hygienists in the audience? I think we actually could have gone for a faster shutter speed there. Yeah. That's something oh to gosh. think about. He's one one thousandth and he didn't freeze the action of this gator. That must have been a fast moment. Yeah, but you can see there's still a lot of movement He's in the going. teeth. Barf. Uh, oh, sorry. If you're waiting, no, you can go on. If you're waiting for action to happen, use that shutter speed that you're going to need when the action happens. Because like you said, I dial it up and down and sometimes I'll be like, uh, well, here's a great blue heron that's just kind of standing in the water. I can shoot that at one two fiftieth, but if I want to get him pulling the fish out of the water, he's going to be moving fast then. Ooh. So I have to keep it at one yeah. thousandths, one four thousandths. Do you get a plan? Yeah, I think I had a little bit. Look at this raven. Stupid. That's so two raven. ravens. Oh, still sneaking in the GOT reference. I... <laughs> this is just so beautiful. I'm deepening the blacks. It's like. The rich color that's so beautiful, you know? Yeah. They're one of my favorite birds. I think they're so Me beautiful. Me too. Underrated, but it's a difficult shot to get, but you really captured the sheen and the feathers. It's easy to let them just go to black. You know what? I think this could even job. work really well in black and white. Yeah, I think that works. Wow, they're beautiful. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's really gorgeous. 105 Poodle millimeters at F28. <laughs> Well, wow. I'll give you a pick for that because the lighting is gorgeous. I would have to guess that this is in captivity. Like, why is it letting you get so close? Because you not care. Uh, we're constantly talking about shutter speed because it is so important to wildlife photography. But here, I think you could have gone down to, you know, probably one one twenty fifth and gotten yourself in at, you know, like ISO 600. And Let's take a question. Chris, do you have Good any call. questions or comments from people? Or dogs? We do. Oh. Uh, for your, you guys specialize in birds. What's the slowest shutter speed for a flying bird in general? Where should you start? Well, it depends on your focal length. Um, so I will be shooting, like the other day I was shooting at 800 millimeters. So I had it at like 1 2500th or something. Yeah, and you know, this shot here that just came up is at one one thousandth of a second, and it seems nice and sharp, but honestly, I'm shocked because we shoot Osprey all the time, and I start at one two thousandths. But as we've moved up to sharper lenses and higher megapixel bodies, I find one two thousandths will often have too much blur in it, and I need to be at like one three thousandths. It depends on the resolution. Yeah, like, how much the bird is filling the frame. Yeah, yeah. Um, a bird like How a vulture, you, you can shoot at one one thousandth of a second. Like they just kind of soar and don't move that much. See, what you should do is just go out and photograph a bunch of things and experiment with your gear and your arms because I'm far more shaky than Tony is and just take pictures of whatever, like gulls, sparrows, if you can get one 
and start with a high shutter speed and then gradually dial it down and then go and look at your photos and see where you're getting sharp shots. It also depends how much light you have. So yeah, wish I had a cool answer for you. This shot's so awesome. The needlefish, that's just one of the most interesting fish I've ever seen an osprey have. And the shot itself is- It's really like beautiful. So perfect. Awesome shot, John. Yeah, let's give him a pick. Pick. I'm also getting rid of the green in this one. I have, like, green's my favorite color, and yet I have something against green today. How? Wow. <laughs> that is such what a cool fish. What is happening? What is that? Justin, do you have any idea? I believe that's a seagull. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, I think you're evading the real Good for question. you, Justin. <laughs> I'm yeah, giving that a pick. Literally made me laugh out loud with that one. <laughs> uh, we should take a look at uh, somebody's portfolio and then look at some more pictures. Okay. Wow. Today's a good one. You guys are really stepping it up. I, you know what? I can't believe I always think back to our first live shows and so much of it was like, look at the histogram, level the horizon. And now you guys are, whew, you've got all of that down. It was always about leveling the horizon. <laughs> Now people tell me to level the horizon and I'm like, oh, I hate my job. <laughs> it's like when your teenager is like, I learned it from watching you. Um, okay. This is Nicole Signor's portfolio hosted by Squarespace. And Welcome. I'm, I'm, but I, wait, I'm confused by this front page. I don't know which to pick. Do like, I do the gallery or welcome? Or would you, you wouldn't start with business inquiries before you figured no. out what kind of work they did, right? Well. Whoa, this threw me off because you started with a portrait and then it went to like the most intense, what is that? Well, Racing thing. I've looked at a lot of dirt tracks, but I've never seen a car like that one before. But your pictures are all great. Yeah, let's scroll down here a little bit. Okay. Pricing and packaging. Oh, I'm going to jump around. Oh, my ADD's getting me. Whew. Tony, help keep me together. All right, hero cards, all prints, book now, design fee. Oh, the prints are for sale? Can I hire you? Oh, book now. Okay, I'm landing here. I'm vocalizing my confusion aloud so you can maybe experience what people might be thinking when they look. I did not, there's so many words and they're all over the place like design fee. I don't really know what that's about. All these prints. I'm not really sure what that's about. What I do want to know is, can I hire you? Um, and so I think you should just have that simply laid out, like uh, portrait shoots, sporting event shoots, whatever you might do, and then give your starting point. If you're just selling prints um, of your photos on your website, you can just have a store so people can go and see the actual print and the price. If you're talking about selling prints once you take my picture, and then you sell me the prints of whatever you took a picture of. That's something that you would like present as a price list once you've started to book the person. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, so first I would lose that intro page. Yeah. We both found it confusing. And now we have a page with nine menu items on it. Mm. We need to consolidate this and simplify it. You're, and oh, and they have sub menus too. This is too complex. Yeah. Um, it can be so, that's so one of the what is home out of all, of, oh, I see. Okay. So now we're back here. All right. I get rid of the home page, and then I want to meet you. That's important. Oh, I love these shots of you. You look so friendly and approachable and cool. Um, um, get love, rid of the extra spaces between the paragraphs, minor thing. Yeah. I love this about you know, your degree in um, graphic communications. I would pare this way down because most people have an attention span about my length. So just tell me, I love that you give some personal information. I love that you give some of your qualifications um, and I would keep it pretty short or just put the pertinent information in the first paragraph. And if you want to keep going, put the other stuff, your services. I'm really interested in that. Yeah, I'm confused because you have services and book now. Those two things should be consolidated. Like on your services page, you have a book now button. That's good. But let's just get rid of the book now menu item. Let's take contact and the about page, meet Nicole, and consolidate those. 
So we've eliminated two menu items now. So this isn't just for help. Nicole. This is for all of you. If you're, it can be so easy to add too many things and forget what the experience can be like for someone going through your site. Good to submit it to us or have a friend look it over. Um, but yeah, just simplify. So I think I would be like, um, I think I would do like portraits, motorsports, pricing and pa packages, meet Nicole and contact. Because like book now and contact don't have to be two separate things. Yeah. Did you say combined portfolio and gallery? Portfolio, portfolio and gallery should be combined. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. And get rid of home. We don't need that. Just wow. have them land on But she your does a lot, so probably. I could see how that's hard for her to to get it all crammed on here. Yeah, I might even add separate menu items up here for portraits and racing. Though when we look here, so the portfolio has six menu items, but this only has only shows two things. If you are gonna have a top level menu like that with sub menus then you should be able to click it and see a description of each of the submenus. Did you know that I used to be on a pit crew for dirt track racing? I did. <laughs> now everybody does. <laughs> I did know that you were in a pit crew. You're a wild man, Tony Northrup. Okay. But you have great pictures um, and a lot of skills, and your website looks really nice. It just needs to be organized a little bit differently. I think your website totally gets the job done. It looks professional, but it can be simplified so that it's more effective for you. So you get more people hiring you and understanding right away what you do and what you have to offer them. But otherwise, good job. Your pictures are great. Your site looks professional. And yeah. let's narrow this down. Like these two pictures are almost identical, same subject. I would pick one and get rid of the auto scrolling feature. Like people like to manually drive things. People I'm excited control. because Nicole has awesome pictures. I want you and, to resubmit, Nicole. Yeah, and there's a lot of room for improvement here. Let's see what Nicole had to say about Squarespace. I really like using Squarespace. It's so easy to use. I don't like that they just rolled out the email campaigns that will now need to be paid for. I liked it better when they were included in my plan. Oh, so oh, Squarespace dang. has a feature where now you can sort of mass mail your clients. Oh, that's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nicole likes using Squarespace. Let's see. Or if you want your own awesome Squarespace website, <laughs> go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. What? Get a 14-day free trial, no credit card required. If you love it, you can use the coupon code Chelsea and get 10% off. You're deflating my competitive nature. <laughs> Is this good for our overall relationship and working together? Yes, but it's not fun for me. <laughs> I will import some pictures that came in during the live show. Let's see what else we got. Uh, While I do that, do you have any questions for us, Chris? Yeah, a couple people commented that they uh, they were they wanted to thank you for sharing your your Spain trip. That was some great shots there. What was your favorite part? For me, we kind of stumbled upon the Magic Fountain, which is just a big fountain right next to like the big Capitol building. And at nine o'clock on Thursdays and Fridays, they put on this like light and music show and just thousands of people gathered. And it was this sort of like old timey entertainment thing where people just gathered around and enjoyed something in the real world instead of, you know, being on their phones or watching TV or it was just like this awesome non-tourist community thing that made me feel like a part of Barcelona. So that was my yeah. favorite part. It was nice. It was like locals and stuff. Yeah, it was yeah. Like, there was a ton of locals and like just little kids having fun and stuff. It was really cute. It was yeah, really it seems like everybody from a, a mile radius just sort of walked into this one part of town. Like there were thousands of people there. The streets were just completely packed. They had a fountain show, Justin, and then all down the street there were just fountains and lights and then there was like this crazy beautiful lights shining over the capitol building it was it was very neat my favorite was part, it some kind of festival or did they do it all the time no they do it every what thursday and friday yeah they've they've done it for cool. like 50 60 years something like that wow. pretty neat um it's this beautiful little guy i don't know this bird it's it's clearly a member of the cardinal family i think but 
I know uh, he's tough. Beautiful. Look at yeah. the little stem he chose, a little tough guy. <laughs> awesome shot. Give him a pick. Here's another bird. Oh, that's oh my bird. gosh, please. <laughs> How is this real? Look at his little ears. I'm gonna give you a pick. We don't need we don't need to talk about it. You know why. <laughs> I love that he's poking out from behind the flower. Um, that just kind of makes it a little extra special. I like it a lot. Yeah, I just wanted to crop it so the composition was a little more balanced. Oh, here we go. I don't think I'd get sick of that guy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Lester is so handsome. Like, I would honestly give him a job. <laughs> <laughs> He's a muscular boy. Look at those shoulders. He's a meaty Works little out. guy. Really nice shot. Maybe I'd just do a little more contrast. He is so cute. <laughs> Oh, this your cat is judging you, Dan. I can tell. Really sweet. I love seeing people's pet pictures. If we could love each other as much as we love our pets, the world would be a perfect place. I would also crop this some. I think this might even be good vertically. Um, but great job with the lighting here. With these sort of colorful animals, the direct light with the light behind you is going to make those colors pop. Awesome shot. Love it. Looks so thoughtful. Nailed focus on the eye. Wow. I love that you got yourself in the photo. You look like you're having fun. The deer seems to enjoy your presence. That's really cute. Whoa. A mama fox. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, great eye. It feels like street photography almost. Like it feels so candid. Yeah. Awesome job. Really interesting. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty funny. While in Spain, we saw um, a mother duck with her little her little babies, and they were stranded. And we watched a guy come and, like, scoop them up with a net and bring them away to the water. It was very nice. They didn't have to do that. Oh, my God, this shot's so gorgeous. Um, it's, it was definitely underexposed. Like, I can see you've processed it, but let's get that exposure up a little bit. Also, check that shutter speed. I bet, I bet you could have gotten it down a little bit. But anyway. Absolutely gorgeous shot. I'll give you a pick. Little flowers. They're so cute. Wow. I love what you did here. I'm just going to raise the whites a little bit. Neat. Really cool. You took a cat shot and you made it special. Like those horses. Yeah, I think it's a good shot. I mean, you don't really have any many choices about the angle. It'd be nice if it was a little less cluttered but what can you do <laughs> what's he waiting for <laughs> cute um this is tough because i think like you know how with people how you don't cut people off at like the joints this is a little bit like cut off horse head right. so maybe you want to show a little more i don't know maybe there was clutter and you're trying to eliminate that but um like i think you need to show a little more of the neck for it to feel comfortable this is how I feel sometimes. <laughs> Speaking of not showing the neck. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Very cute shot, Andrew. Oh, dear. Oh, my That's goodness. really sweet. Okay, I was nervous. This is 300 millimeters, so there's some distance. Then why is he looking at him like that? Yeah, I don't know. It looks like it was taken with a 50 millimeter. There's something weird about it, though. Like, the colors are very strange. I don't know why. You're really seeing colors tonight. I know. I don't know what it is, but I like the, the expression. Wow. That's a beautiful bird. Yeah. I I don't know that bird. It's gorgeous, though. I might even. Don't want to go too far, but maybe even just up the blues a little bit in the background. Wow. What a pretty bird. <laughs> <laughs> I they always have that face. That's really beautiful, Eli. Um, I love the mood. You got a great expression. Sorry, I just stole the... Yeah, I was just going to up the contrast a little bit. And maybe bump up the exposure and brighten it a little bit. Chris, do you have any other comments or questions? Dang. Holy moly, before... Whoa, look at this. Yeah, 
There's a good question here from from Lindsay. She wants to know: Have you or Tony had any uh, scary wildlife experiences when you're shooting? No. My first was pretty scary. I was in Baxter State Park in Maine, and I had a disposable camera. <laughs> I saw a moose in a lake, and I wanted to get closer to it. Um, but then the moose, both the male and female moose, left the lake and were walking straight towards me, and I just sort of instinctively froze, and they ended up walking just like a few feet away from me. Like okay, they hit the same branches that were touching me, and moose are peaceful animals, but this was genuinely terrifying to me because well first i was just a boy from texas so i never even seen a moose before but it was they were so big like i swear they were six feet tall at the shoulders and i definitely felt like they could just kill me if they if i they, they bothered. could yeah, yeah they're they're yeah. massive beasts and it was it was genuinely scary yeah that sounds scary <laughs> i've never had a scary situation with wildlife I feel like the scariest stuff is going to happen with underwater photography, right? Yeah, but I saw a shark and I thought that that would scare me and I was just thought, no, they belong here. It's fine. Probably the closest I've come to genuine death is, I, again, I had a disposable camera like when very early in my life <laughs> and it was one of those underwaters and I was swimming in Hawaii and I saw these... Uh, those spinner dolphins jumping out of the water and they didn't look that far. And I thought I can swim out there, get a little closer, have this nice experience with the dolphins. Oh my and God. And how good of a swimmer am I, Chelsea? Terrible. I'm a terrible swimmer. And this is the actual ocean, which I don't think I had any experience with. And I did, I got close to them and I got some pictures, but then I got tired and I started trying to realizing I needed to turn around. And I, uh, I literally almost died. I, I barely made it back. I believe it. To the point where um, I got close enough to the shore where I could touch the sand, but the power of the waves kept pulling me back out, oh, yeah. and I ended up like crawling out, and because I just had, was out of energy. Oh my! God. And that's what I will go Tony. through, just because I wanted to get a little closer to the dolphins. Like, what am I going to be like the first person to take a picture of a dolphin or something? I almost died. I'm a dummy. I'm amazed you're still alive because I took a scuba class with you and treading water was a problem. Yeah, I am really bad, really bad at swimming. I don't think people understand how many times I've saved your life just by being like, you, don't do that, please. <laughs> <laughs> you're always trying to like climb off of ledges and stuff. I don't know what's up with you, honestly. Is this shot legit? <laughs> I'm giving you a pick. Either way, I th I think it's a legit shot. I want to raise the shadows in the bird a little bit, but what? There's a rainbow behind the bald eagle. Wow. What does it have in its talons, though? Oh my God, Damon! I can't believe we almost missed your shot. I th think it's real. It looks real. Yeah. I fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, you sir get a pick. Well, it's rough though, because the we got to get the eagle exposed. Yeah, raise those shadows up, and, and it looks so much better. I think you can go into each color and like, you know, get his beak a little brighter. This deserves this photo deserves a little extra love. Yeah, this can be an award winning photo. Yeah, it's I've never seen anything like that. It's very cool, and the shot itself of the eagle is perfect. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, great work. That is so cool. And he's at uh, one twelve fiftieth. Let's see. I would have guessed shorter, but that looks good. Yeah. Wait, one hundred and sixteen millimeters. Wow. Could that be right? One hundred and sixteen millimeters. How is that possible? He is also an eagle. What is the eagle even eating? That does not look appetizing. I don't think he's the first person to try to eat that. <laughs> Okay. Wow. I'm going to give this a pick. 116 mil not with MP. <laughs> Chelsea, we got to wrap it up. You can look at a couple more pictures, but I, I know, but their pictures are so great. I know. Okay. I love that you got them doing something interesting. It's like a very tender moment uh, and a really nice mood. I love it. I just warmed it up a little more and added some contrast. 
Let me show you. Yeah, just catching a lion awake is an accomplishment. Oh, oh man, gosh. that picture is so perfect. I know, you guys. Oh, that is gorgeous. Wow. It's rough you though. Pick. It's, it's a little overexposed, so like, don't blow out all the snow and then bring up the shadows if you want to bring up the animals a little. Yeah. <laughs> is that a mandarin duck? I think, so. I think so. Oh my gosh, I'll be pickles then. <laughs> Good dog. Wow. Damn. We have to do another animal show soon so we can look at more photos. Wow, wow black vultures. And this is another one where I would expose. See the background's overexposed, but just expose for the animal and then you can um you can fix that. Or if you could have gotten lower and use the brighter part as the background for the animal, then we would have seen subject separation that yeah. would have made a big difference. Yeah. Wow. Oh, well, this reflection works because he's like, who am I? <laughs> oh. Wow. All right. Let's take one last question before we go. What is it, Chris? Okay. <laughs> there's a there, Terrifying. There's been a lot said about the quality of the G Master lenses on Sony, but are there any, what is the best inexpensive lens, you know, like under under $1,000 for wildlife photography on a Sony? Oh, well, I think the only option you have under a thousand dollars, I don't, I don't think there is one. Yeah. yeah I don't know that. Yeah. It, it's tough. We've actually been doing a very detailed comparison of wildlife photography with Sony cameras and it hasn't been going great. <laughs> we'll have a whole video on it and I don't want to spoil anything, but it's tough. I, I would still, for most people, I, I would probably steer them to getting like a used 7D Mark II or a used D500, depending on their budget. Yeah. Uh, or even an original used 7D, you might still be better off like getting a different body in order to use some DSLR lenses at this current state. At this point, both Tamron and Sigma don't have their 150 to 600 for the Sony mount, do they? No. And all the cameras we've tested with any telephoto lens, even with adapters, uh, they just don't work very well with any of those cameras. Even with the almighty A9, you stick a big adapted telephoto lens on it and it's frustrating to use. Yeah, if you look at um, stp.io slash which camera, you'll see all my current wildlife recommendations don't include Sony cameras. But a U7D is real cheap. <laughs> So get one of those and a used lens and you'll probably be way happier. Okay, that's a wrap. Thank you, Chris, for taking those questions. Thanks, Justin, for manning the battle station. And sure. Thank you, all of you, for joining us. Thank you, Squarespace, for making this show possible. If you want to try out your very own Squarespace website for 14 days, you don't have to pay anything. You don't have to put in a credit card. You just try it out. Go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and use the coupon code Chelsea. And if you decide to buy it, you can get 10% off. See you next week. The theme will be portraits, and it will be at 4 o'clock. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Sorry, we've got to run. We've got. That is all. Go <laughs> kick. Okay. You That's know, like hear. adults do. <laughs>